Welcome everyone to the Bradenton City Council meeting, Wednesday, May 11th, 8.30 a.m., City Hall Chambers. As always, we will start the meeting this morning with an invocation and a prayer. So if we have Pastor um, A. Don Hollis up here, please come forward. It's a certified lay minister with First United Methodist Church of Bradenton. Please stand. Mr. Mayor, council members, attendees. Hear these words from scripture. 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings, and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Loving and gracious Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, we are grateful for your presence among us. May our discussions be fruitful, conducted with respect for the issues and each other. We now devote our skills and best interest to the business of this community. We recognize the wisdom that comes from your word, Father, believing we can apply it to the concerns and plans this body is pledged to deal with for the betterment of all. Give us, we pray, fortitude for tough decisions, expecting victory won through many advisors. Strengthen our hearts as we plan our course, order our steps as we seek divine guidance. Bless the order of our agenda with positive outcomes providing the city of Bradenton and even surrounding communities with the results of just governance. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This time, if I could ask Chief Kramer to come forward and lead us in the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. you. May be seated. Chief Kramer, if you'll stay up at this moment. I'm going to take the privilege that I have to uh, deviate a little bit from the agenda. And at this time, I'm going to walk out to the podium. City Council, Administrator, all staff. Um, this time I just want to recognize Josh Kramer. At this time he's our Assistant Chief, but um, this will be his last meeting of the, uh, as Assistant Chief and, and retiring after 27 years. And it's one of those things that when you look at any person that goes to a job and, and time they spend at doing something, 27 years is a long time, and when you look at it when it's over, it's a fast time. In uh, 1995, uh, Chief Kramer came in to this department, had a lot of different um, responsibilities up until Assistant Chief. So I um, just want to recognize what a great honor it is to have known him since that when I was on the police pension board, a little bit, you know, because at that time he was an officer. But um, one of the things that I, I read in, in some of the bio stuff lately, what he's done is that uh, one of his most um, humbled things that he did was when he was a training officer, helping others and then seeing some of the, those people actually retire before you. So, you know, that they came in and stayed the long time and, and retired. But um, it's just an honor that you've served our city for that long and we're gonna miss you and we hope you won't go far. I know you're gonna do a little traveling yes. for a while and uh, enjoy with your wife, but enjoy it and thank you for what you've done for not only every day for the city, but just what you've done for our whole community. So we appreciate it. We'll give you this plaque here, 27 years. It's a little token, but we appreciate what you've done. I'd like to ask all the council to come around so we can get a picture with Chief Kramer. And, and Matt. So take a picture, then we'll let him say a few words. Let's go over here. Thank you. Thank you. 
then we'll get a, a, get a picture of it with the council, then we'll get everybody up. Um, maybe even a firefighter or two could come in there with the hot <laughs> <laughs> Let's get everybody up now that is involved. Come on, police officers and staff and Dougie. Anybody else? Another firefighter sitting there. I like my wife, Maria. Some of our family, all family. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, I didn't prepare any remarks. I do have a few things to say, though. Um, all those officers who were standing here behind me, that's the only way that any of us get to this point, which is retirement. And that's the goal for all of us when we come in. May 8th, 1995, I was told, hey, here's, uh, here's your end date. And I was <laughs> like, gosh, that's a long way from now. And here we are. And I'm so happy um, those officers here, keeping me where we need to go. My wife, Maria, though, is the one who, uh, she, moves, she moves around on me a lot, so. Uh, she's the reason I am able to stand here, though. She lifts me up. Um, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the chief, obviously not here, I think, because she was gonna get emotional today. Yes, why really she, is why she decided not to be here. <laughs> yeah. um, and we'll remind her of that often. No, of course. So. Uh, no, but I, I again, I, couldn't be in this position without her uh, confidence in me, her support, um, her leadership, uh, which all these officers know, despite um, some people being upset about things here and there, um, we would not be in a position as a department as we are right now without her. Um, Mr. Mayor, I do thank you again. I will not be going too far. I hope to be actually very close here very shortly. <laughs> uh, so thank you all again. Thank you. I appreciate it. it. Josh, Josh, Josh. Chief Kramer, uh, congratulations. I've enjoyed working with you, and maybe you get to continue on. Um, one thing, most important thing I want to know is will your wife still provide us with peanut brittle during the holidays? Because that is the best peanut brittle I've ever had. Uh, there are a lot of people in the audience with that same question. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a wait and see attitude on that one, but <laughs> I don't know uh, there, there are certain that. people who will always uh, receive. Yes, right. better to give than to receive in the That's right. holiday season. So yes, <laughs> Councilwoman Barnaby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Assistant Chief Kramer. Thank you for everything that you've done for this community. Uh, Maria, thank you for sharing him with us for as long as you've shared him with us. Uh, I wish you all the best in the future, and go Knowles. Go Knowles. <laughs> all right. Scott and I are feeling lonely up here. So. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. All right. It will move on, but what I'd like to do is um, there's a couple of different groups here. Why don't we kind of walk up, Sarah, Max, and our county people come up to the podium while we read our... National Economic Development Week proclamation, if that's all right. Ms. Melton. 
National Economic Development Week, May 9th through 13th, 2022. Whereas Economic Development Week is an event created by the International Economic Development Council to celebrate the achievements of economic developers. And whereas the International Economic Development Council is the largest professional economic development organization dedicated to serving economic developers. And whereas economic developers promote economic well-being and quality of life for their communities by creating, retaining, and expanding jobs that facilitate growth, enhance wealth, and provide a stable tax base. And whereas economic developers stimulate and incubate entrepreneurism in order to establish the next generation of new businesses, which is the hallmark of the American economy. And whereas economic developers are engaged in a wide variety of settings, including rural and urban, local, state, provincial, and federal governments, public-private partnerships, chambers of commerce, universities, and a variety of other institutions. And whereas economic developers attract and retain high quality jobs, develop vibrant communities, and improve the quality of life in their regions. And whereas economic developers work in the city of Bradenton within the state of Florida, and now therefore be it proclaimed that I, Jean Brown, as mayor of the city of Bradenton, do hereby proclaim May 9th through 13th, May 9th through the 13th, 2022, as National Economic Development Week and remind individuals of the importance of this community celebration, which supports expanding career opportunities and improving quality of life. Signed, Jean Brown, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Sarah, you wanna say a few words? And yes, Mayor Brown, this has been in council. This has been a privilege this week to spearhead the work for Economic Development Week. So you'll see that hashtag Econ Dev Week 2022. Um, we hope that we get a great picture from today that we can pair with your proclamation and share on social media. I think uh, you and Mr. Perry had the opportunity to participate on Monday in our theme this year talking about education as an economic development driver. And uh, the key piece, we uh, were able to entertain <coughs> um, the new CEO of High Tech Corridor, Paul Soule, and uh, it was very exciting at the end of our evening at Manatee Technical College for him to say, what you're doing here in education is absolutely incredible. And I think for us in the overall um, context of our region is as much as we want to attract companies, as much as we want to do things in today's mm -hmm. world, it's talent creation that makes the difference in creating great places to start and grow businesses and families. So I thank you for su your support for that and for the team of people that work together every day because economic development is a team sport. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else want to? Max, you want to say a few words? Or? Good morning, Council. Good, Good morning, Mr. Perry, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Rudisol. Max Stewart, I am the Vice President of Economic Development for the Bradenton Area Economic Development Corporation. Um, the lead economic development corporation for Manatee County's nine communities. And so on behalf of Sharon Hillstrom, our president and CEO, and our entire team, thank you for um, supporting economic development in the city of Bradenton and for what you guys do to promote the well-being of the community and also raise the level of economic <coughs> development in the area. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Yeah, and I think you said something, Max, that the EDC serves the, all the communities in Manatee County. And one of the most important things, I think, as we look even with with Mr. Perry and I going Monday night and listening to some of the speakers, when you looked at the collaboration and you know we say, what can we do as the city of Bradenton in our 14.4 square miles? Mm -hmm. We may not have the mass land to give like the county might or others, but what we have is our innovation in our downtown area that may be able to grow in some of the developments that are gonna happen. So you know we have the density and the height that we can work and that's a, a benefit to us. So how are we as a council and a city going to make some of those Amazons maybe come into our town because we have some vertical space? Yeah, you know, correct. we don't have that land, but there's opportunity, and that's what excited me even, even learning more on Monday with the group. And, and one thing I did tell Mr. Perry when we were leaving is, I guess if you're a 30-year admiral or DOD 
military person, then you go into this going in your career, because it was interesting hearing those gentlemen's careers of what they have done and next steps so for what they can do. So thank you for bringing them, Sarah and Max, and all you do. Thank you all. And I, we've got our county people here, I think, that, that Katarina. Yep. And then I'll move oh. mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, morning. Council, Mr. Perry, and Mr. Rudisil. Congratulations on um, being a part of Economic Development Week in Bradenton and in Manatee County. And Sarah really did the heavy lifting of this celebration and getting the work done. But know that Manatee County is your partner year-round to assist with the heavy lifting of economic development on a day-to-day -day basis. And we spoke yesterday when the county received its proclamation on the, um, the work that comes with government-led, locally-led economic development. And so we certainly support the work that you do, um, certainly want to see your downtown continue to grow and be vibrant and to serve all the residents. And also um, know that in addition to your wonderful economic development staff, everyone that you employ contributes to economic development in the city of Bradenton. We're proud to be a partner, and again, thank you so much for the recognition. Appreciate that, and we appreciate the collaboration that, that going forward our city and our county and other cities are going to continue to grow on. So thank you for what you do, and appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. Now Katerina coming in. and uh, Katerina Tarakio siren CRA uh, Executive Director. Um, I am thank this is only one week of recognition, but it's a year long uh, partnership, a year long effort. Um, the CRA team is strong, uh, is small, but we're mighty. And we, in addition to our community redevelopment, we do wear economic development hats. And I'm blessed to be working with all the people behind me and many others in our community to support economic development initiatives. And I'm pleased to also say, as we're in the, in the process of hiring a CRA manager, um, the candidate that we would like to bring forward has excellent economic development skills. So in the next year, you'll be seeing a lot more initiatives from the CRA to support economic development for the city of Bradenton. So thank you all for the support, and thank you to my wonderful partners for being here for Economic Development Week. Good. And, um, and before we go, uh, Ms. Barnaby, did you have? No, oh, I, I, I was going to ask for the picture, but I want everybody. I was going to ask everybody to go down, just like uh, get up again and go down. So. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on, Madam Clerk. We do not have any presentations today. All right, and at this time, um, then we go to citizen comment. I do not have any cards um, for citizen comment. So um, there's, okay, so if we have somebody, did you fill out a card? Okay, um, if you can come forward, state it, and then just fill out the card when you're done. But um, we'll have citizen comments for three minutes on any non-agenda items. Um, so at this time, come forward. State your name and your address for the record. Good morning. Good morning. 
I'll fill out my card afterwards. Yeah. And you'll Sorry have three, about that. three minutes. Thank yes, sir. You. My name is Brian Zoller. I live at 512 Riverside Drive East. <clears throat> and good morning to you all. I think you guys are doing a wonderful job. And uh, the river walk by my house is looking great. Um, so thanks to Jim and uh, the NDC crew for doing a great job so far. So a few weeks ago, uh, I and a few of my neighbors received a letter from the Army Corps of Engineers that included a 69-character case-sensitive link to a website regarding a proposed project near us. If you were lucky enough to type in the 69-character link correctly into your browser, you were then directed to a website. You had to navigate through several other pages until you found a link to an application for a project in our neighborhood with another link with pictures. Luckily, we found it. The proposed project included 220, or 220 slip marina surrounded by a sheet, steel sheet pile wall extending roughly 700 feet north of Caddy's restaurant into the Manatee River. Caddy's is located just east of the Manatee Memorial Hospital at 801 Riverside Drive East, Bradenton, Florida. 90% uh, of the slips are proposed to be rented out for profit. Included in the email was an email address to Tracy Hurst to submit any public comment within 21 days, which is tomorrow, actually. So we've requested a time extension with the Army Corps to make more people aware of the project. The neighbors, uh, uh, several of my neighbors we've met a few times, and we've got some uh, comments that we've uh, submitted to the Army Corps. Uh, they include some of the following, although it's not limited to that, but uh, we've got some dredging and environmental uh, impact uh, concerns to seagrass, oysters, mangroves, fish, and manatees. We've got some visual impact uh, comments uh, for the homeowners and the new Riverwalk users. Uh, you know, this thing's going to be, right now it's got sheep, steel sheet pile walls around the outside, but we all know from downtown uh, the marina that eventually, after it fails a couple times, you're going to have to surround it probably the entire thing by the steel sheet pile walls. So the other uh, comment since I happen to be a drainage engineer. My, my concern are uh, flooding impacts too, uh, since we're going to be adding hundreds of concrete piles and a sheet pile wall is the impact to uh, blocking the river flow. So basically, overall we feel like the project is a little too large, or a lot too large, a little out of scale, and it doesn't fit into the neighborhood. Uh, we feel like it's infringing on our rights. It's, you know, not only extending in front of us, but it's, it's basically blocking the entire river. So we think it should be scaled down, should stay in front of their property, and really, as an operational standpoint, should kind of wrap around their property instead of one dock extending out the entire thing. So in addition to the Army Corps Marina application, there's newly erected, uh, in addition to this uh, ap application. You. Your three minutes is up. Um, thank you. Appreciate your comments. Can I have one more question? Three minutes is up. We have to stick within our policy. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other citizen comment? Any other citizen comment? All right. Hearing none. Any council comment? Yeah, I, I do. Okay. Mr. Sanders? Um, I asked Mr. Rizzo a question. Is, that, is this something they should have not told us or sent I mean I lit I li I live there that's my ward mm -hmm. and I'm a councilman and I have to read about it in a paper I mean at, Mr. Mayor at, at this point as far as I know there's no application in at the city um, I don't believe that the that the permitting process through the Army Corps requires that notice be provided to local elected officials, you know, they're, they're completely independent from the permitting process at the city. So, I mean, it, to the extent that what they're proposing requires them to get approvals from the city, that, that will come back. Uh, I'm not asking about approvals. I'm asking about the common courtesy to pick up the phone or send us an email to tell us that these letters are going out to our constituents without our knowledge. That's an art. And I, and nobody got anything up here either. Well, I, I know, but, the, but there, there's been, uh, what I read in the paper, there's been, uh, Mr. Mayor, you, you, I think you met with the developers. Uh, 
Not about that, just about it. Well, I, so. that, I don't know what you met about, but I, I, well, what's in the paper isn't always what the facts are. Well, I can ask you now. Have you met with them? I met with a developer talking about Tarpon Point, but not the marina. They didn't say anything about that. So. And, and, and Mr. Perry and I met, and I think maybe they were going to be talking to others, but I don't know. Okay. I don't even think that's the same developer. Oh, it's not the same developer? So we talked about Tarpon Point, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, so I don't know anything about this. Okay, yeah. Mr. Ritter, so, um I asked you a couple of weeks ago or more about a legal opinion for how a, uh, a previous administrator could be a consultant to this group and if that is a violation of any uh, inside knowledge he might have with how the city operates to actually uh, converse with myself or others on this board on something like this. And have you researched that or do you need more time? Well, no, we've, we've researched it. We've got a draft. I expect that memo to go out to the council within the next couple of days. So today you, don't, you wouldn't have an opinion? You, you, you just don't know today? Okay. No, I, I mean, I, I can give you the sneak preview if that's what you're, you're asking. Yeah. We're not aware of anything that prohibits um, employees or appointed city officials from representing um, representing clients before the city after they've left their position. So there are restrictions on elected officials, but not on um, appointed officials and employees. Okay. Now, that being said, there are provisions in the statute that would allow the city to adopt an ordinance to prohibit employees and appointed officials from representing clients and lobbying the city for a period of time after they leave office. So that, that is an option that, that the city council has. Going forward. Going we don't forward. Have anything on record now back that the well, city I, I would propose that we uh, start an ordinance for that. And if we want to discuss it, Mr. Mayor, then I'd be glad to, or uh, make a motion now that we develop an ordinance to prevent that because I think it creates a, a conflict um, and that concerns me that, you know, it's, does anybody else feel the same way? I would like to get, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. No, I was just going to say, I think at this moment, it's, you can make any motion you want and then if we get a second, we can go forward. But at this moment, I think it's inappropriate until we get more information and get the final presentation so I can look into what the state statute says and I know there is a constitutional um, product coming up soon for elected officials that's going to I believe six years to be in front of but that's that was voted on by the, the public a few years ago so that's yeah. correct and that's addressed in the memo as well yes, okay. yeah but that's elected officials and, and we all know that uh, administrators or managers have much more knowledge about individual uh, inside dealings with planning, zoning, and those sorts of things <coughs> than uh, any council person would unless they're working here full time. So uh, to me, the, the city should uh, adopt an ordinance that prevents that from happening, uh, and especially in this case since there's been accusations of uh, uh, ownership by that individual it seems quite conflicting well mr sanders i'm not going to go into the I, I years and years of things but accusations are accusations and we shouldn't be saying anything until unless there's proof if you got proof of something bring it up please mrs coker i believe had a comment so oh i just was going to yeah. say i mean i think it's appropriate to discuss it in a workshop you know i i, don't, I hate to do something <laughs> You know, as a as a knee jerk reaction, but I think it should be looked at what what's happened in other communities. You know, what are the repercussions? But um, I think it's worthy of a workshop for sure. Mrs. Coachman, yeah, um, <clears throat> I agree with Councilwoman um, Coker. It, it seems like it seems like some of us are in the fog about it. So um, <clears throat> I would rather spend some time in a workshop getting more information because I'm not privy to maybe some of the things that are out there. All so, right, thank you. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Moving on, Mrs. Melton. 
Next is the consent agenda. We're requesting approval of items A through J. Right. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, move to approve. Second. 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 We have, okay, we have a move to approve by Ms. Barnaby, a second by Mrs. Coachman. Any further discussion? I would like to remove item uh, A and H. Mrs. Barnaby, do you have any objection to that? No, sir. Seconder? No? So. Okay, so we have a motion by Mrs. Barnaby, a second by Mrs. Coachman with a removal of A and H suggested by Mr. Sanders, which was approved by the motion in the second. So all in favor of the consent agenda taking off A and H, say aye. 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 I don't know why I said aye. Let's start aye. the vote in Ward 4. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Yes. <laughs> Ward 5. Yes. Ward 1. Uh, yes. Ward 2. Yes. Ward 4 is not here. Or 3 is not here. So thank you. I approved, Mr. Sanders. Uh, yes, uh, item A uh, is uh, allowing, uh, I'd like to have a, a little more in detail uh, depth of this doctor. Uh, and by the way, I was in your fine city last week at Venice. Yes, I heard. And they, you heard, yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, that's a, that's a very well uh, friendly city, well organized. And it seems like a big family. It is. And they spoke very highly of you. And I said, well, uh, we did a good job capturing you, and I'm so, and, and that's right, and you can't, and we, we're not going to let you go back, because anybody that comes from an environment like that is welcome in my city, I'm telling you. So I appreciate your past, you know, experience with Venice, and, and hope that, that, that you, you would do the same for us. Yes, thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. So the question I, I have for you is, this uh, is a, uh, program that allows texting among um, uh, who all officials anybody's got a, a cellular phone is uh, it's given to them by the city or does this include department heads does this includes employees who, who, who all does it include and what can they do with the text and can they convert files and information with this text sure so what this software is is we're playing a pilot program a couple dozen phones, uh, city issued uh, devices. And what this will do is automatically capture text messages. So we won't have to screenshot the messages and email them in. They'll go into a platform. So when we have to do um, searches, you put in your keywords, it pulls the information down. Yeah. So we're just going to test this amongst a few folks around the city. If it works, then we plan in the future fiscal year to roll this out um, on a wider scale. And that would be for anyone who has. A, who's getting a stipend. The plan is to replace that with a city phone and this software will be on there. So you won't have to worry about emailing messages. These are not city phones. We've got several city phone, uh, cell phones issued to uh, individuals, mostly senior management right now. Is that true? Um, folks have their own phones. Um, they have a, a stipend, but they have their own phones. A uh, stipend, they, but, but you're going to convert those to city right. uh, phones that would have the ability to text and capture the information. Uh, is that something that's done in other cities or? Yes. Um, Did you do that in Venice? Yes, we're kind of on an island as we're one of the very few organizations in the, in the two counties that are not doing this. That's not doing that. Correct. And so, so information, can information, the same information versus an email be communicated on the text? If I'm communicating with you on the text and I say, look, send me the file of uh, whatever, uh, I can attach that, the PDF, and just send that right straight through the text so that you can get it where, wherever you might be? Text has some limitation. In I, I know it does, but you can get some, especially if the phone has capabilities to open it. If it does, right. But it's mainly wording and pictures, pictures. limited video. Right. It's not much. Some files you can send, but all of that is captured through this system as well. So what would be your reasoning for doing this other than it's just a good thing to do? It's an easier process for both sides of the communication, person sending a text, receiving a text, also for when there's a request made for messages. So it's a single platform. You log in, download, and it's easier to produce. It's faster for staff. So we wouldn't get into a situation where somebody might say, uh, Hillary, where's your 30,000 emails? Uh, would we, and they'd all be in a text that we wouldn't be, uh, uh, 
have access to? And I saw that there's, there's language in here that, <clears throat> that uh, uh, complies with state statute in uh, uh, Sunshine uh, of providing information. So texts are public information. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Everybody agree on that, Mr. Rittasso? Do you have any, you, you, I, I had a conversation with you about it. You, you indicated you did not think they were public record. That is not what I said. Okay. Text messages can clearly be a public record. What I said was not all text messages are public record. Okay. So you do recommend that you wouldn't use the city uh, uh, issued uh, phone for personal information. You use, keep your stuff separate and don't use them, intermingle them. Uh, yes, sir. And, and that would be a policy that would have to be set out yes, with sir. this. Okay. Yes, sir. And I see the cost there. So is this not creating a third layer of uh, public information to the public that now they have to make a public information request through our PI officer and that let's um, just say a reporter out here wants to uh, get information, he or she is now going to have to ask for this text uh, information because he would not only have to ask for uh, the documents, he'd have to ask for the um, uh, emails, and now he would have to ask for the text. But we don't capture that text in-house. We have to go to the third party and request it and, and ensure that they will come back to us to get that information. So that could possibly slow up a public information request. Uh, no, sir. I've used this software for several years. Okay. I was administering it at Venice. And at, and at Hollywood. So tell me how it would, it would not slow up the process if I'm, I'm a reporter and I'm calling in to the city, the PI, and say, I'd like to have all texts of Mr. Sanders in the last 30 days. You would make a request to that third party vendor that's, it's, we're. Uh, no, right. sorry, the request comes to us. Request, no, 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 I mean, the request comes to us and then we request it from them. We log into a website. You log and, into a website. And we have access to it? Yes, it would be under our account. We log in, put the parameters, and we download the information. And so we have that uh, quickly to yes. our. Okay, great. That sounds good. Thank you. Is that a motion to? That's a motion to, to accept this. Is there a second? Second. All right. Second by Miss Coker. Start to vote in Ward Five. Yes. One. Yes. Two. Yes. Four. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Sanders. H. H. H, I believe, is an easement um, vacation, and I, I uh, just give me a brief uh, of, of what this is and that we don't need this any further in the city for an actual easement because now we're giving it to a private business. Is that correct? Right, and it is an easement, not a right-of-way, and it is <coughs> just vacation because it has uh, no utilities, no public need. Uh, for it in the future so for a veterinary office on the north side of Manatee. So we're just undoing the easement and then yes. that, does that become the property of, of, of the... Um, well, it already is their property. Uh, we just got We're an removing any right to that easement, I, yes. Okay, that's all. Thank okay. you. I, I motion to approve that. Or, I mean, the, yes, a motion approve to approve. Yeah. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, Ms. Coker. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll start the vote in Ward 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 4. Yes. And five. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on. There. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, just Harris. on the, e, uh, the, the <coughs> IAFF uh, collective bargaining agreement, I appreciate Council's uh, approval of that within the consent agenda. Mr. Huffman is here, and I just want to express our thanks um, on behalf of myself and, and I think Council as well to the representatives of IAAF uh, getting with us and, and trying to negotiate in, good, in, in really good faith um, an agreement that addresses um, a, a, a wage level that we feel is competitive and, and fair um, in today's marketplace for our public safety professionals. It's affordable for the city, and I think it's also hopeful for the, for the rank and file uh, to show our appreciation and the like. So I just wanted to point that out. That that's a fairly significant um, issue on the agenda this morning. And as we all know, um, we're going through collective bargaining across the spectrum of the three entities that we, we do that with, the three unions. And so this is the first of three. Um, it was done by our staff with a lot of hard work, which we all appreciate. 
and uh, I think it sets us on a good course for the next three years in fairly tumult tumultuous financial inflationary times. Good. Thank you. Moving forward, Mrs. Madam Clerk. Uh, next, we have under new business under Attorney Rudisell. Mr. Rudisell, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this council is aware uh, the there was a suit filed against the city and federal court several months ago um, by a number of um, environmental groups as a as a consolidated claim. Um, we've been working for the last several months to uh, negotiate a settlement of that suit and so that is what is before you today it is a consent decree uh, that would be submitted to the federal court for um, for their approval um, in essence the agreement provides for the city to make a number of improvements to its uh, wastewater system over the next several years um, the agreement provides for either a settlement payment to the Tampa Bay Estuary Program or um, a public interest project that the city could do in lieu of, of that payment. Um, the agreement provides for um, attorney's fees and costs be paid to the plaintiff and their consultant. Um, at this time, we don't have a, a final negotiated figure on the, on the attorney's fees. Uh, we do expect to have that shortly and we'll bring that back to the council um, in the alternative that could be brought as a separate claim that, that they could pursue through the court or that or that we could jointly put toward the court to um, to determine a, a fee amount if we couldn't if we couldn't reach agreement on that um, and then the agreement provides for additional uh, reporting requirements moving forward notice requirements things like that uh, and there's a penalty schedule moving forward um, if there are future uh, violations of of the permit requirements so i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend that the council get into a discussion uh, on this item as it is still ongoing litigation until we have this settlement finalized uh, however there have been some questions about what the costs are moving forward um, and I talked to Mr. Perry and I think he can he can go into some of those areas today um, just so the council has a has a better feel for for kind of what those numbers are moving forward Mr. Perry Mayor, council. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to I'm going to try to provide a, a, a brief overview of the cost, and, and it's a very good question, the, the, what, what the longer-term costs are, um, without getting, getting into a great detail and, and respecting the legal advice of Mr. Rudisell and, and where we are, because any public statement that made in this forum, since it, it's an unsettled lawsuit at this point, if it was to proceed to litigation, it would be a statement of an official and, and could jeopardize our position in the case. But I'm going to try to talk basically about this, the, 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 the fundamentals of it. So there's four parts of the settlement. Um, it, it, it really deals with remediation to prevent bypasses from happening. The, the, the crux of the case is a Clean Water Act under federal statute violations. We have a permit to basically um, uh, put certain types of pollutants into the river. It's issued by the state. This lawsuit says that even if you have a permit to do that, there's a private right of action of what are called citizens. And, and that's the, the jurisdictional gravamen of it. Um, St. Pete basically said, well, if we have a permit, we have a safe harbor. The state issued that. It went to court. The district court, the federal district court, said it's not a safe harbor. There's still an independent action. They litigated just that. They did some discovery, litigated just that. After about two years, they ended up going through the process. There was, I think, a million six in legal fees that were associated with that particular case. And they capitulated and said, what do we do to fix it? 
we knew that going in, so we didn't want to go down that road. We wanted to get right to um, trying to look at remediation. The good news was that I think we impressed upon the plaintiffs, Mr. Bloom, Waterkeepers, et al., all others, we impressed upon them that that Mr. McClellan and the team over at Public Works have been working to both mitigate and remediate this problem. They were, I think, 60% on design, engineering design solutions, dealing with water treatment specifically. There's two problems that contribute to this. One is I and I, the sewer system. When it rains heavily in July and August, the penetration of water because it's so saturated the ground, gets into our sewer system. So if we have a sanitary sewer system that's a closed loop and that system basically has water coming into it, it increases the volume coming into our treatment capacity. And that's really what the problem is to start with, a breached sanitary sewer system. How do you get one of them? They're aged. They've been here for 40, 50 years, made of clay, cast iron, other types of uh, destructive, corrosive materials. Um, generally speaking, you've got pipes, you've got manholes, manhole covers. There's things called pick systems that basically are designed to stop the rain from just getting in the creases of the manhole. That, 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 that's kind of how sensitive the water volumes can be. Um, the pump stations as, as the third element. Jim had been working on this, getting back to that, and, and, and we had been doing a lining system, an inspection and lining system repair for quite some time. Uh, so we were already down the road on, on that to a certain extent, and, and again, when it comes from the sanitary sewer pipe system, it goes to water treatment. Here's the second problem that it hits. When it hits water treatment, we have 20 million gallons per day capacity. Sounds like a lot of water that you can process 20 million gallons a day. On average, we do about 11 million, gallon, um, 11 million gallons per day, so we have 9 million gallons of excess capacity. But what happens in July and August, when you have this penetration into our system, you get, you get clogs at the filtering system. That water treatment has, I believe it's five filters, and when one gets clogged, you gotta shut down the entire plant to, to clear that, that, that grate, the filter system. And, uh, and when you have to shut it down, obviously our capacity to treat goes significantly down. So what Jim was doing was trying to get designed engineer solutions so that we could shut down one filter but still operate the other 80% of the plant. Kind of a key concept and the like. And, and, and that's what we're moving towards. The cost associated with that, and I, 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 don't, I, I don't have the specifics to have very precise data, but I, I think I can kind of estimate it at around $6 million or so. Then the second part of it is, again, getting back to the, the uh, sanitary sewer lining system and the pipes and the like, there's an agreement to do a certain amount of mileage per year to try to get that um, completed. I think we have 75 miles. Is that about right, Jim? In, in the agreement, it's 61. 61, yeah, miles of piping that has to be inspected and lined if necessary. We'll do that over the course of the next three years. We'll fix the water treatment system itself and those filters, they're called clarifiers and mud pits. We'll fix that. The good news is, is that we can use our ARPA money, as you've all approved. I think it was $7.9 million in one of the prior legislation authorizations, appropriation authorizations. And so now we're using federal money that all of our taxpayers have probably sent to Washington on something that we'll get a 50-year benefit from, not on buying something that we'll get a two-year benefit from. I and I as a problem is across the state of Florida because we get a lot of heavy rain, the soil conditions, a whole host of things. A lot of entities have that. And, and so, you know, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Most municipalities, local governments, they go, we don't have the money to tear up roads and replace, replace piping with PVC, non-destructive corrosive materials. And so they do a little bit here, a little bit there. Jim has been doing, as I said, a, a good amount of that within our budget overall. This accelerates that. So we've got the remediation of those problems I talked about, a reporting requirement that has to be um, in compliance with providing information to the state DEP, um, the plaintiffs in certain cases, posting on our website um, what our loads are. Nitrite loads, that's it's a bad thing. That's the second problem. You've got this thing where you're, where you're putting things in the water, they're pollutants. What, 
Well, tell us about the chemical composition, the, the, the biochemistry of it. Nitrites in particular, red tide, oyster, uh, dead seas, uh, dead bottoms, things like that. Most of the science suggests that that's contributing to it. We don't want that. We all cherish our waterways. And so the second part is the reporting. The third part is the penalties. Um, there's a few other smaller components. And ultimately, it, there's a list of, of, of uh, payments if we were to continue having these problems after a certain period of time. Um, uh, daily, monthly assessed fines, we try to work them out. I can tell you that Jim and Jim's team being Kim Clayback from the engineering side and Susan Hokley from the environmental sciences side, particularly, she's really good at that, that environmental science, biochemistry type of thing, microbiology, all that stuff that, that, you know, that, that people do that do that. Uh, that's kind of what she supported. We probably had, with Mr. Rudisell, Mr. McClellan, myself, uh, Ms. McClellan's staff, I, I don't know, I, I'd say 50, you know, probably meetings back and forth at some point in time on Zoom and the like. This was a very, very complex issue to try to address. I've handled it in other jurisdictions twice. I've never seen it done as quickly, as efficiently, with a better long-term solution um, and more economically than we were able to do. We got a 60-day letter. I want to say it was back in late November because mm -hmm. January was the deadline. You have to give a 60-day letter before you can bring a suit under the federal statute. We received that. It's now May, five months later. It's kind of unheard of to, to do things that quickly. But since we were already well on our, our path to telling them that we re realize there's problems, these are what the problems are, these are what our solutions are, uh, we were well prepared to bypass a lot of the back and forth uh, and get right to the crux of trying to fix the problem. That's what this involves. Uh, Mr. Rudisell talked about legal fees. Legal fees for their lawyers, approximately $200,000. Again, St. Pete goes through discovery, pretrial motion practice, loses that pretrial motion practice on a dispositive motion, $1.6 million. Not to try the case just to get to, through, through a motion for summary judgment that they lost, or 12B6, I'm not sure what they filed. Uh, so we, we, as we move forward, we're gonna take that seven million. Jim puts a certain amount in his capital budget each and every year for, for sewer lining, pump replacement, other types of things that will be attributable to resolution of this lawsuit, but there could come a time and when I say come a time, we'll probably have to supplement that over the next three years as we identify particular categories that we're a little short on either money or actually getting things done for the remediation efforts, where we have to plus that up. And we'll look for state grants through DEP, other types of funding sources before we would ever hit um, any sort of city funding. And it's, it's likely that, that, that we'll find a good amount of that. I've talked to one of our representatives from, from Tallahassee, um, and we have a project in right now that we think is helpful. That's kind of the overview of where we're at on it. Uh, the short version is I've seen these things go into place, and they're supposed to resolve themselves within two years, three years, and they last 10. And every year you've got to pay their lawyers, your lawyers, other things that come up. We don't want that. We want to get down to business, take care of the problem, meet our obligations under this settlement agreement, and there's a provision in there that says, this is what the problem, usually it's a moving target. We really stress that we want to know where the goalposts are, what it is we have to do specifically, and then allow us to self-audit, and at that point, after self-auditing of those things, check the box it's done, go piece by piece to the federal court and say, vacate this, vacate that, vacate the entirety of the provision, and ultimately in three to four years, hopefully, have be, be done with our obligations entirety. That's pretty good when you think about three or four years from 2022, because we have to be out of the river by 2032, and ultimately, we don't want to be discharging these, and it's all treated water. The, get, the, the permit is, the, the, the permit allows us to do treat it and untreat it, but the reality is, is that what most jurisdictions do that are on waterways is they treat the water to drinking EPA drinking water standards and they put it back in the river when they have these kinds of uh, uh, issues. We want to basically move to the next level, which is injection technology, injection well, so we stay out of the river as required by Florida state law by 2032. This will probably get us, uh, 
I'd say 60, 70 percent there, maybe even a little bit more, maybe 75 percent to the ultimate goal. But these are long-term plans and long-term commitments as you hear this, th 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 this uh, protracted explanation I'm giving. That's what the settlement involves. All right. Thank you. Mr. Rudisell, any follow-up? or? Nope. All right. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Okay, Mr. Sanders has a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Coachman first. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, we'll start uh, nope. the vote. Nope. nope. Well, I do have some discussion. Okay, so again, we want to, if we want to get into too in-depth, I'm not. We need to ex executive I, I don't session. need to be coached. Thank you. Uh, Sir, I, I, it's my chair. If we need to get into executive session, we will, which will have to be different. I've, so I've spoke the attorney to has appropriate talk, but go ahead. I just want to make sure that we bring this back up in a meeting very shortly, perhaps next month, after we've signed this agreement. The, the issue is we we haven't signed an agreement, so I've agreed not to say anything about costs and that, that sort of thing So, with Mr. Rizzo. But I do want <coughs> uh, us to follow up so that the public knows what this could cost the city and uh, follow up with what requirements are going to be uh, required of citizens at a future meeting. And, and I want an agreement that we will do this timely and with follow up uh, meetings to keep everybody uh, up to date on on where we're at with this after we sign this so I don't want this just signed and it goes away because there's a significant cost here and that's but I'm agreeing with it because this is this is the only way for us to uh, get this done and, and we agree mr. Perry's already said that he would bring it back when we and mr. Rudisell said when we get the final cost over as we go and it may take longer than one meeting because oh, this, is, this will take Long time. Right. I mean, I, I, there, will de there certainly can be brought back for, you know, to dig in some more on what the ongoing costs will be and things like that. I think um, Mr. Sanders is referring to the, <clears throat> excuse me, that there is a requirement in the, in the settlement that the city would bring back a, an ordinance to address some of the private lateral lines and how those, and there are a lot of options for how the city can handle that, and there will certainly be public meetings and hearings and discussion on that as it would it would have to be done by ordinance so yes. thank you any further discussion hearing none we'll start the vote ward two yes four five, four yes five yes one yes carries unanimously four to zero all right um, at this time it's about nine we're going to take about a five minute break we'll be back at nine thirty five Thank you. There, during the break, if yes. I could just be heard real quickly, yeah. I've asked Solid Waste. Uh, Jim, you want to tell the folks what we have planned during our break and surrounding area? Tough yeah, uh, in the back parking lot over by uh, the entrance to the hotel entrance to the parking garage, we've brought down one of our uh, solid waste trucks that we have uh, equipped with the banners that we're putting on the trucks related to our recycle program. And next to it is one of the blue recycle containers that we'll be deploying. So we encourage you to go take a look and see what we're talking about. And, and Jim has his staff, Mr. Cho and Craig and some other folks from there that answer any questions for you. Yes. All right, so it's 929 now. Let's go till 940. That gives us 11 minutes to walk out and use the restroom and come back in. So. We will want to ride in the truck. We'll arrange that later. Nine forty for later. We're going to need you back here. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can drive. Got your CDL license? No. Nah. <laughs> Thank you. Miss, Mrs. Singer is ready. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Robin Singer, Planning Community, Devel Community Development Director. Um, here today to discuss the visioning process that was proposed as part of our discussions on the comprehensive plan. Um, we'd be looking for a facilitator to run that program. We, before we put out an RFP, I wanted to make sure that we're 
agreed uh, in terms of the scope of services uh, and what our expectations are, would be for that process. We expect this to be a very broad-based uh, opinion process for the city's residents, business owners, and nonprofits to participate in. Uh, so uh, we are in, uh, anticipating that the facilitator will at a minimum uh, interview uh, the mayor, each city council member, and city administrator, uh, that they will hold one, at least one public workshop in each of the wards, uh, that they will hold uh, a one, at least one public meeting with the business community and one with the nonprofit organizations, um, and also uh, have at least one meeting with the city department directors, which could be a collective meeting. Um, and then they would provide a summary of those results and then that in turn would be followed up with a citywide electronic survey so anybody who wasn't able to physically participate in the meetings and we'll, we'll look to find somebody who can also uh, promote electronic participation in the meetings where possible. Uh, but in any case, if they weren't able to participate in the meetings, they can still participate in the online survey, and then they would pre prepare a, and present a final report. Um, again, very broad-based, not just planning-oriented, but, but in a lot of different aspects of um, how the city works um, and, you know, what their needs are as a resident of the community, um, and also being able to decipher who is actually a resident of the city. They're going to register through a process, we would expect. Uh, so we want to pick a facilitator who's technologically proficient mm -hmm. in, in surveying and collecting data and analyzing that data and also knows how to maximize participation. So um, that's what we expect to have at a minimum within the RFP scope of work. And so I wanted to bring it up for discussion and confirmation that we want to move forward on this process. Um, staff did look at other communities and the costs associated with their visioning process, and it's a very broad range of costs as to one that conducted a process for under $10,000 to one that was close to $400,000. Um, so it your scope of work is important in determining what those costs are going to be, and we can always negotiate back from, but I think we need to ask for the maximum of what we want um, because you don't want to increase that and therefore increase your costs after you've gotten uh, selected a, a facilitator you want to make sure that we've we've hit the top end of what we think we want and then we can always dial back from there if uh, it's not uh, financially feasible so with that um, I'm just here for questions or input questions any question question Nyla, hold on let me see if the anybody mr. Sanders Anybody want to go before me? Mr. No? Sanders? Okay. Um, uh, thank you. Three years, five months, and 11 days. I've been in the office and I've asked for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I agree with everything you said, and the last time we did one was 2010, a full scope one. So it will be almost 13 years. So. Even if the cost is 400000 you divide it by 13, it's minuscule because we're not doing this every year. We should be doing it every five to seven years probably, not 13. So I'm in favor of this. I've been asking for this, again, for three years, five months, and 11 days. Thank you very much, Mrs. Singer. Any other discussion, Ms. Barnaby? Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. Singer, thank you for bringing this forward to us and thank you for asking for our input. I'm wondering, because it says hold one public workshop in each of the wards, the way that some of our wards are constructed, my ward tends to run, it goes west and then south a great distance. And within some of the, that ward, there are several population clusters or community clusters. I'm thinking that it might, we might get a better turnout if we hold like two workshops in each ward so that you can do a east and west within the ward or a north and south with, within the ward. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, I, I go from Riverview Boulevard to almost all the way to um, State Road 70 down at, at the bottom part of Ward 2, you know, and I've got some of, the, some of the areas have big clusters of population like Ironwood and Pinebrook, and then some of the, the um, apartment complexes to the south sort of thing. So 
I understand maybe thinking that one meeting might be best, but looking at the way our wards are constructed, we might want to do two meetings in each ward. Um, and maybe even do it so that one of the one of the meetings is at the daytime for people that might not want to drive at night and one meeting is held after um, business hours for the people that are working mm -hmm. working folk and you can pick which one you would want to go to but if we only have one it might make it very difficult for those individuals that live at the two <laughs> two mm -hmm. parts of it to I, I mean I'm sitting here trying to think where I would hold one meeting that would be uh, central. central to everybody. Yeah. And that, I think that's a great in all the words and timing. And again, we may, you know, sometimes you might want to have it at a, it might not be exactly in the ward, but it might be convenient for people that live. And then we may end up having, I think, one citywide meeting too, because if it's location wise and timing, and we see that, you know, a lot of it's going to be timing. I think, is it June, July? Is it August, September? Is it November, December? Yeah. You know, and so some of that will play out and, and maybe we end up having more meetings as we go forward. So, And I think that's, the, that's another question Something. that needs to be answered is when you want to start the process. So when the, how long will the RFP take? Uh, RFP probably, I would give it a couple of months okay. for responses yeah. and, and, and come uh, back to selection us. committee. Yeah, and then coming back with uh, a couple of choices should we do 90 days like we did other RFPs we're doing now? Or? Yeah, probably, yeah. probably all together. All right. All right, so um, do we need a motion to kind of give you direction to continue going forward? Would you like that? Uh, I, I would, and if you could also um, <clears throat> discuss or, or include within the motion about when we should start the process. When do you see it? Do you want to start it <clears throat> in the fall? Do you want to wait until full season in January, or when would you like to start the well, We process? know the traffic has drastically died down <laughs> at some times during the day, unless our day. streets are closed in some areas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> but that's progress in, in that. So, yes, ma'am. At this time, I'd like to provide a motion to direct staff to begin uh, the RFP process or to put it together uh, with looking at beginning it in January is there a second I'll second it for discussion purposes discussion? all right discussion. I'm just Go kind through. of getting this this wasn't in my attachment um, so we're doing an RFP for a comp to hire a consultant to do this, mm -hmm. and you want the RFP to begin in January, or you want us to be through the whole selection well, process I, to I begin? I would like, th no, I, 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 perhaps I wasn't clear. I apologize. I'd like us to start the RFP process, get someone in place, and begin the meetings in January. My thought being we've got the budget coming up, and all of the budget workshops that we have, workshops, and then the two 501 meetings that we have to do. Um, and I'm thinking getting through that and getting through the holidays. I mean, I, I remember coming to a, a city meeting. It was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and there was a lot of stuff on that agenda, and there was a lot of stuff that was done, and nobody was paying attention or nobody was, was at the meeting because it was the day before Thanksgiving. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we, when we started talking about an, uh, our schedule, that's one of the reasons back in the day that we started having one meeting in November way before the holiday because of all of the people that would travel for the holidays and, and not be paying attention to what government was doing so that's that's my thought behind my motion all right any further discussion yes I'm Mr. opposed Sanders. opposed to 90 days I think we need to do it as soon as possible because there's numerous people out here to do this for a living they're 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 they'd be knocking your door down within 30 days I you know and if we don't get the bids uh, back RFQ then I guess we, we could extend it if we only end up with one or two but that's not going to be the case we had a, a gentleman here just the last meeting that does that and, and there's m numerous people that does that so 
doing that to me is only a, a, a intended to delay the process. And to start this in January, <sighs> that's ridiculous. This needs to be started. It should have already been done. Now start now. Now I go to not three years, five months, eleven days. I go to four years. Anybody here? Pin drop. Uh, that that is unreasonable, uh, un un uh, unbelievable that we would suggest that. Okay, oh, I'll, I'll call you. the question. Okay, mm. question's been called. We'll vote on calling the question. Um, is there a second to? Second. Second. I already have a motion. A second. Call the question. Um, we'll start the vote in Ward Three, no. which we're not four. No. One. No. Five. No. Five. One. Yes. Yes. Two, so the tie is two to two. And then that's my vote, I guess, Mr. No. Ritter, sir? No. Yes. Can I, uh, two to two. Point of order here, uh, yes. Mr. Ritter, Mayor does not have an overriding vote on an item like this. It's only in an ordinance, per the, char per the charter, the way I read it. Yeah, let me pull it up. I want it. Oh. It says the mayor has a veto power on ordinances. Not this veto. It's not a veto. Or, or, or tying vote. Yes. So there's no limitation on where the mayor votes in the event of a tie. So I have the authority to vote when there's Correct. a tie. Correct. Correct, and that's what I knew. So the mayor will vote yes on calling the question. So at this point, we'll start the vote to approve the uh, motion by Ms. Barnaby, seconded by Ms. Coker. We will start the vote in Ward 5. Yes. 1. Yes. 2. Yes. Four. No. Motion passes three to one. Thank you, Ms. Singer. Thank you. Moving on to the next unfinished business. Good morning, Dr. Christoph St. Louis, Assistant City Administrator. Just provide you with a just a two, three minute update on where we are with the scooter program. So we have finally begun discussions with bird bikes and they sent over a draft agreement it was a boilerplate agreement so I sent them our mobility ordinance uh, 3092 that was approved last year so they can adjust their agreement and get it back over to us um, got a copy late Monday so we're reviewing it I do want to meet with the the uh, group that met on the RFP so we can discuss it I've also been in touch with some other cities just to see how their programs have run with them Pensacola, Miami, waiting to hear back from them. So we'll have something that's in a bit uh, you know, uh, better order before getting over to Mr. Rudisil for for any uh, for his review, and then we'll come back again with council. Any questions? Not on that matter, but I might have another two other questions. If that's for, okay. Pardon? For him? Or I don't know when the appropriate time to bring up yep. other so things just that any might questions be finished. For him? Any from the scooter? All right, hearing none, Ms. Coker. Okay, uh, two things. First off, I'd like to know about the garage lease spaces. I don't know if that's going to be going in your report. I, I was going to put that in my report, but I, I can address it now. It's a pretty, uh, a pretty short discussion. We are in um, uh, final stages of, of finalizing the lease agreements, getting the signed lease agreements back. Mr. Barker and I uh, 
have been having dialogues about certain questions some of the uh, the vendors have. Nothing really of significance. Uh, I would imagine what we'll see is them beginning to occupy it probably in a week or two, opening for business June 1st. That's, that, that's what we wanted. There's some sign permit issues that come off. We have a great selection. I've been talking with some of the folks themselves, um, the vendors and, and the principals, the owners of the businesses. Everybody's really excited. And I think it's, it's a great selection and, and slate of retail we have. I talked about... Uh, uh, the various five folks and, and the spectrum of services and, 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 and uh, goods they provide and the like. So I, I think it's great. And uh, I'm glad we, you know, took, it went slow, but I think we did it right. Um, there's still a couple of loose ends. You know, people like, can I paint the air conditioner? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things like that. But uh, otherwise, everybody's really excited. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Sanders. So what, when did you expect the uh, move-ins of these I believe June 1st. Yeah, June 1st. I, we were actually asked, Mr. Barker asked me, most of the tenants said we want to start moving in there as soon as the lease is signed. And I think we have one or two signed. I'm not quite sure. Um, and, and ultimately, they want to start setting up and, and look for a June 1st opening date. So they could be coming in fairly quick. Good. Uh, good. Good. Good job. I, I, I appreciate what you did. I told you that before that it's, you know, uh, whether <laughs> controversy over who gets what. But yeah. I think there's a good variety of selection in there. That does. Only thing question I had is uh, that garage, is that in the CRA? I believe the entire project is. Okay. Is there any reason why uh, the CRA was not involved in this selection process as it's in the CRA would, would have the full authority over that. It's city, city owned property. Within the CRA though? Uh, I'm not so sure that the CRA has any sort of supremacy or overriding interest in it. As a practical matter, each and every member of this council is also a member of the CRA. So um, I would hope that we're all mindful of, of that cross direction. Just curious. Yep. That's and I have question. one other question. Yep. Yes. Uh, I, I seem to remember that we tabled a motion at the last meeting about some of the... There, there was a motion that was on the consent agenda that was pulled and ultimately tabled. It dealt with uh, the uh, request to put people into um, uh, senior service within the Florida retirement system. Um, the short version on that was there was questions from Councillor Sanders, and Councillor Sanders had asked Ms. Taylor, who's here to explain it, um, in regards to would they be giving up their rights? And, and really, if you're not in senior management... Mr. Mayor, if we... If we could, please, Scott. Yeah. Uh, we uh, before we are gonna we can engage in discussion. We need to have a motion to pull that resolution off the table. And, and then see if that... If that I, I object because I specifically said in that motion that we had to have data to uh, disprove my uh, indication that the council was, had the power to hire, fire uh, department heads and senior management. And I said I want that seven days, at least seven days prior and on the agenda and it's, not, it's neither one. So I don't think we can do this. I don't think we can do it because that was my motion and it was seconded and it was voted on 5-0 that we have information. I have n zero information. None. Zero. Uh, Mayor, I I'm going to try to understand Councillor's questions about data to disprove something to start with. Um, I, I think whenever you try to prove a negative no. that, that through formal logic that doesn't work. But that being said, um, as it relates specifically to the second part, um, I think we're asking for a legal opinion about whether the count, these people work for the, the council, myself, the mayor, or anybody else, which is a charter question. That's right. Pretty and, simple. And, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's under administrative powers that we've uh, voted on by resolution, which I had the documents, but I wasn't prepared because I didn't know this was on the agenda. And I suppose we can talk about anything, but my motion was clearly stated that we need to have this prior to the meeting so that we can review the facts if, if they're in opposite opinion of mine. My opinion is by the charter and administrative uh, responsibilities were that the, uh, the council hires 
and fires department heads and senior management. It's always been that way since I've been here. And now you're asking for to move that with the, the, the gentleman gone that is that made my second without uh, uh, discussing with the full council here. And this changes this changes the, the council's powers. Uh, it overrides them, but it can be disputed at a later date. But I see no reason to bring this up at this time. And, and I'm, I'm opposed to this adamantly that this needs to be brought up when we have a full council and at the next meeting at the at the earliest and I, I'm, I'm I'm not happy that that this is being untabled while the councilman is out and without the data that I asked for well first off I'm going to address the councilman not being here that's that person's choice not to be here so you can't you can't hold hostage this council when there's a majority here so that has nothing to do with this vote that somebody's not here or that this information that you know it doesn't matter who's here if we have a majority we, we have a quorum. quorum we have a quorum we can have You're a council talking about meeting. authority of the council though. well but let's let's hear that, mr that's mandated by charter and and administrative codes well, and mr. resolutions Sanders, and i don't have any of that the charter fits, i do have it upstairs if you'd like to take a recess and i go up there and research the, it. the charter fits your um, opinion when it fits your opinion but when it doesn't fit your opinion you don't like it so you can't have it both ways I, I object charter. to that mr. mayor well that, sir the, you just brought the, something the, up the we'll be in order please and and you keep making up different things like you no, just I said this morning it doesn't give read. them yeah but so can I and you you made a statement this morning that was incorrect on that what's that what's that about the vote with the mayor the tie vote. You said it's okay, only for others. No, so he had right. to look it up too. Well, but he was confirming. So I knew what it was, but I let our attorney, you asked the attorney a question, he answered it. What does you this were wrong. To do with that? Because you're bringing stuff up. So, oh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Rudisell. My job is, sir. No, it's not your job yes, to disrupt job to meetings. Question, so, Mr. Rudisell. Anything. Yeah. And everything. I, <laughs> well, first of all, I would go back to my initial comment, which was we need to have a motion to pull this thing off the table. Uh, I would like, to, I don't know if we have available what the actual motion was when it was tabled. I know there might have been some additional discussion that went along with that. I don't know what was actually incorporated into the motion, but I think we can answer your questions if, if, that's, if that's what. I ask for documentations that support your, your allegations that, that, that the, the, the city administrator has full authority to fire department heads and managers but that without had, the without the approval of council that was not discussed and that was that was that was the, the the that is exactly what that uh, document was referring to it it doesn't do that that resolution establishes exempt employees for the retirement system it, it doesn't have anything to do with appointing department heads the retirement system is a different issue. Don't please don't use that as a, the excuse to. Well, to I'm going to make a motion people. to untable so we can have the discussion. Second. All right, we have a motion. I, and a I didn't get a legal opinion. We have a motion and a second on the floor to untable the discussion of uh, April 27th meeting item A on the consent agenda. Um, Hearing no, we're going to start the vote. In oh, wait a minute. We have to start have a legal opinion first. We're going to start the vote in Ward 1. I'm asking yes. for a legal opinion Ward 2. First. Yes. Ward 4. Legal opinion first. Ward 4, yes or no? Legal opinion first. We have our opinion from two. He hasn't given it. I don't know what the legal opinion is that's being asked for. That, that, that I asked for this to be tabled until we had information that verified this. Now, if it didn't get into the record, that's also another issue that we discuss things and we ask for in record, and then somehow it doesn't get in there. So I'm 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 a little confused. The minutes, that. the minutes say that we don't have minutes. The summary. All the I'm questions. I'm sorry. We don't have any minutes. So the summary. A vote of on the floor. Yes or no, Mr. Sanders. To no. have this discussion. No. Right. To, yeah. to no by Mr. Sanders, Mrs. Coachman. Yes or no. Yes. The motion passes three to one to bring it off the table now. Mr. Rudisell, any suggestions? Well, let's start by passing out the resolution if we if we have it. Yes. Here it is. Does she need this again? No. Thank you.
which everyone had this resolution last meeting Correct. in their documentation to read. So um, it's, this is nothing new. No, but I have a question uh, to this clerk. You already had these ready to hand out. Yes, sir. I come prepared when I can, just in case something comes up. You have all of last meeting's documents? Any table, table documents? Table motion. Any table, motion. Any table documents? Table. Up. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have the reading of the, the, the table and, and what the... Uh... In the summary of actions, it says, after further discussion, Councilman Sanders made a motion to table item B to a later meeting. The motion was seconded by Councilman Roth and passed five to zero. But that's that's a that's a summary of what the. Uh, Those are actions taken during the meeting, yes, sir. But they may not be a hundred percent accurate with what the discussion was. That was the motion. Yes, sir. Th that's a summary that that you've put in writing. Of your interpretation of what was said. Mr. Perry. So can we have a discussion? Yeah, Mr. Perry, I, the question I asked, does this change anything in the charter for you to hire and fire any employee? I don't think I could change the charter um, from my perch on the second right. floor as right. the city administrator. I think that would take a vote of the public to amend the to charter. change the charter. Right. Uh, yes, but that's not the proper question. Mr. Perry, at the last meeting, there. you yes, said, can, on, I ask, can I address him? Address the chair, please, first, Mr. Okay, Perry. Can I, can I address Mr. Perry? Mr. Perry, are you finished with comments? Yeah, I thought he was. Mr. Sanders? At the last meeting, I was clear, I went back and watched the tape several times, that you said you did not believe that the council had the right to uh, authorize a firing of any senior manager or department head. You did not believe, you did not interpret the charter or any other document that was an opposite opinion of mine and I asked for that to be tabled and for us to review it in ample time not just undo something at the meeting with no documentation no supporting documents to to and to give a legal opinion on and now we're doing exactly what I was feared of and I, I don't like that it's it's, it's, it's not uh, it's not what the process should be and you did say that. If you'd like to go back, I, I can print screen where you said that you believe that you have the full authority to uh, fire any employee, department head, or senior manager without the authority of the council. Now, if I'm wrong or you want to make a statement today that says just the opposite, I'll entertain it. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Councilor Sanders. Um, I'm gonna assume arguendo that your recitation of the facts of what I said were somewhat accurate. Somewhat accurate, okay. Uh, I, would, I would modify it to say that my, my, my statements about the council having authority, um, there are certain provisions in there in the charter that deal with like the chief of police being a carve out, so to speak, right. to the mayor's exclusive authority. Generally speaking, I would, I would think, and, and I'd re defer to legal counsel, who I've had conversations with about this, uh, this issue, at a certain level, um, I've had those conversations. I, I haven't done the legal research within different areas of authority for state law, as well as other tertiary authority. But I'd say that a city administrator, and under our charter, the language I've seen, is the person that's responsible for um, administration of the HR ordinances, classification rules of the city, that it isn't any one counselor. If you think no. about it, everybody would be fired if it was just one counselor. No, no, who said that? Weeks. Uh, I, I, I'm just No, it's, 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 it's a majority vote of the council. And in the charter, it does not mention, does not mention administrator at all. Please let him finish. Okay, well, it's not in the charter. Uh, as far, I, I, I'll probably defer to, to, to Mr. Rudisell because there's also the, uh, the approval process of directors and the like. And I think that there's somewhat of a 
misunderstanding about the exact express language of the charter that I think Mr. Rudisell can explain. I think we ought to probably all hear Mr. Rudisell's interpretation of, of, of these issues. Thank you, and that's exactly what I asked for, to have me. that. No, you asked me. I asked you. You directed your comments to me. Okay. And I'm answering the question, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. But that's exactly what I said, that I, we need to have documentation, a legal opinion of this. In our charter, there is no administrator. In our charter, there's a clause that we can make an, a, a city manager, but it has to go to referendum of the public. That's the only mention of anybody in between mayor, council, and, and our employees. That's all the charter says. Trust me. And if you want to research it here, but that's the point I'm getting at, is why don't we just take a little bit of time, take a deep breath, and research it. I know you laugh because you want to give up, fine, that's, that's up to you, but I, I'm not willing to do that. I'm certainly not willing to do it with a councilman that was the second motion on this. I just don't think that looks transparent. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Russo. Um, I, if the council wants me to dig into whether or not and who has the authority to appoint the department heads and different senior management personnel, that is certainly something that I am happy to do. However, nothing in this resolution alters the charter, the code of ordinances, or purports to give any authority to anyone to appoint any personnel. So I don't understand why this discussion is being tied to this resolution. I mean, I'm looking at it, a resolution which, by the way, is coming to the city council for approval. It states, it defines the department heads, it defines the senior management class, and says those positions are exempt from the merit personnel system. That's it. So, with that said, City Council has this has, must be brought. If Mr. Perry, as administrator, is going to fire our planning director, for example, he has to come before us and make a recommendation. Is the way I read it. It's not in here, but this is where this is headed. No. Is that still true? I don't want to ask you. Is that still true? Is that still true? If this council wants me to issue an opinion about what authority Mr. Perry has to hire and fire specific personnel, I, do. I am happy to provide that. I, do. I, I did not understand that to be what was requested I, at the last meeting. I may have been confused about the discussion, uh, but I think it's irrelevant to this resolution. And, and I will say, I, I'm not aware of any employees being either appointed to a department head position or terminated from a department head position without coming to the council. Well, we hired a city administrator, and I don't believe we had an actual vote on it, what? assistant city administrator. That's not, that's a, not, that's exempt under, that's just. That's exempt? We did have a vote. It's not a charter position where Mr. Perry hires his employees. No. So, um. Well, wait a minute, that's just an opposite of what he just said. Uh, again, I'd like to have an opinion on that. Right, well, again, one person, obviously you've stated your opinion. Is okay. there any other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. Barnaby. I'm trying to understand how we've gotten so far afield. Mm. We tabled this at the last meeting. A member of the council was asking when we were going to bring this back. Under the procedures that we usually follow, we had a 20, 30 minute discussion before we even voted to take it off the table and we should never have done that. If something's tabled, it's tabled until it's brought off the table. And that's what we were trying to get to because that's the procedure. That's what you're supposed to do. 
And uh, that's called being transparent. No, it's Mr. not. Mr. Sanders, let her finish, please. Okay. Is she, uh, Ms. Barn, have you finished? Just, well, no, no, I, I hadn't, but thank you. <sighs> this seems like such a simple resolution. I do not understand what, how we've gone so far afield here. And it seems to me that there are times that the waters get muddied and I don't understand the intent. I'm just gonna say it that way. But we had a motion to take it off the table. It has been removed from the table. So at this time, I would like to make a motion for the approval of Resolution 22-22, Defining Department Head, Senior Management Class, and Merit Board. We have second. a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Coker. All right. Further discussion? Uh, this, Mr. Sanders? This was, uh, last meeting was on the consent agenda, not on the agenda to discuss. I pulled it, just for the record. Okay. Consent agendas are, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of consent agendas on controversial issues like this, <laughs> or large dollar issues like this, and authority issues like this that may possibly change the dynamics of our uh, employees in a reporting system, and I haven't heard anybody say out loud that this does not change that. Uh, if so, uh, make that a legal opinion uh, today, and, and I'll go from there, but I will not vote for this. Any further discussion? Yes. Ms. I'm, Coachman? I'm hesitant to say, but I'm confused. <laughs> this memorandum is talking about senior management and the merit board. I'm not gathering from this that it's talking about hiring or firing and who has the power. I'm just trying to understand what is it we're voting on right now. I mean, are we voting on this or are we voting we, on this? My motion, Mr. Mayor, if I may, my motion has to do with resolution 22-22 and, and, and resolution 22-22 only only okay because it, what we are doing <coughs> is we are designating people and their ability to go into the Florida retirement system yeah as I read it if I'm incorrect please let me know just reading from the ordinance there are three things that the ordinance does <clears throat> It defines the department heads. Ordinance or resolution? Please Sorry. let me finish. Resolution. Defines the department heads, defines uh, Florida State Retirement Senior Management Class, and defines the Merit Board exempt employees. Right. That's it. So there's no Ms. Coachman hiring. still has the floor. Please address Oops. the chair. Mrs. Coachman still has the oh, floor. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not touch And, and please sorry. address the chair when you want to be recognized. I'm getting clarification. Okay. That's what was going on. Um, okay. So that's what I understood from it in that step. Okay. Thank you. All right. Call the question. All right. We have a motion to call the question. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to call the question. We'll start the vote in Ward 1. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Four. Three's gone. Three's gone. Um, so I yes will, or no vote. Well, I want to qualify. May I? Continue. It's a yes or no vote, though. It's, it's a question. Is the no well, discussion. It's not yes or no to me. Right. I will vote for it so that I can undo it at the very next meeting, and I intend to, when we have a full council here, I want this discussion before. So yes, Just only because that question. authorizes me to undo it. This Thank calls you. the question. So okay. five. Yes. Question is carried four to zero. All right. 
the motion on the floor. And we will start the vote in Ward 2. Yes. Four. Yes, with my conditions. Five. Yes. One. Yes. Carries four to zero. Yeah. All right. Mr. Perry, anything else you have before we move to council reports? Oh, no. Okay. All right. We'll start the council reports in, in Ward 4. Um, Mr. Mayor, I would like to know when we're going to have a public meeting on the streets that are going to be changing directions for traffic flow downtown Bradenton. I understand that that's a possibility to happen very soon and we haven't told the public. Can you tell us when that, was, when that will be? FDOT has made some final conclusions on one-way streets, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not, it hasn't been presented to us yet. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, McClellan probably addressed this. Um, at, <coughs> Mr. McClellan, you're the one that asked me to, to uh, question why we haven't addressed this with the public and the council. So, um, if you're referring to the project that is the um, short term alternative right. from the CCMNA exactly. project. Um, we have asked DOT to come before council to make a presentation. They had come before council four years ago, I think, mm -hmm. made a presentation. Council's different, administrator's different, mayor's different. I've told them you need to get in front of council right. to present that information. So that request has been made, and as soon as we find out when they're available to do so, you will be made notified. They are going to come next meeting and give us an update on some things. I don't know if that's part of that. I would think it probably would be. I mean, the project that they're proposing to do is um, not set to be let for construction until next March, I believe. So, we, you know, that's our, we met with them in March when, when they were like, we're, we're, we're Ready finalizing up. design. We're like, whoa. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> but as part of that, they're not changing anything from making anything one way. All uh, it, it, it's changing the methodologies of where turns are allowed on First Street and on Ninth Street. Let's let them bring that to the whole council because Absolutely. I just heard about it the other day and we went for a ride to see because. Your staff was dealing with it and had some concerns on different things, and that's where we bring it up. So um, we did talk with LK, our secretary, which from everything I heard from 2013, from Mr. Gallo, especially over the years, that FDOT didn't care what we said. They were going to do what they want to do on their roads. But this concerns some of our roads. So yes. we want to work with them to try to come up with a solution to move our traffic grid through town better but we also control this, some, some of it we don't control. Others we do control, but this, the new administration at the FDOT is very um, considering when you talk about with people in the town now. So no, that is on the, there's some on the agenda next week. I've also asked LK to get more on the agenda, if, uh, to get more explanation at so the direction of be, Jim. Perhaps it'll be at least initial discussion associated uh, with great, it. Great, good, good. Thank you. I didn't know it was on the agenda next week, and I've been uh, worried about this for months, that we'll change something and the public does not get a forewarning, whether they like it or dislike it. You know, FDOT probably do what they want anyway. We understand that. You know, they're a different, totally different entity. But we, it's our responsibility to inform the public. And Absolutely. also, this did come up at the MPO, I believe, four years ago, for three years ago, whenever it came up. So it has been out there, but a lot of time has gone by. I, I will tell you that there is on the city's network, on the Z drive, there is a folder uh, entitled the C C N M C M N A A, which was their study. And all of their presentations that they brought before council at that time are in there. So if you wanted to review them ahead of that meeting, exactly. I can send Some you it. has changed, hasn't it? Um, I don't think, I think the... I don't, there might be some more specifics, but I think the general concept has remained the same. I, I haven't read it, but uh, again, because I didn't know, I just thought that you telling me that FDOT is ready to fire the gun, and, I, and I'm saying, hold up, pull back, put it in your pocket, 
and let's get it out so the public knows before we shoot. and that and that's exactly what we told them too when we you met told them the same thing yes. and you told me you was concerned that we, we needed to have a public meeting with the, the public it's and it's been so too it sounds long. like we're, it sounds like I'm talking about something that you, mr. mayor you've already got it worked out that's great yeah it's it's been too long since the information was Absolutely. brought up in Four public years forum is way too long and and now that it's Nobody's getting closer remember that. It, it needs to so be next again. meeting uh, there will be there on the agenda they're on the agenda again and mrs we, melton's been working with him on logistics and timing to make great, sure it happens great news thank you uh that's that's all i needed on that um i would like to again once because it was mentioned in uh, the comprehensive plan to have e evening meetings in uh, the wards and which is a good idea and I understand we used to have evening meetings. We'd have one in the daytime, and we'd have one in the evening, and it was basically two sets of people. In the daytime, it might be a lawyers and, and people that's on staff that's doing that. And um, I've been requested by numerous people to have at least one evening meeting uh, that the public can come, because a lot of people work and can't be here, and there's a lot of important issues, and I don't think that is, uh, good is there any appetite it never has been but is there any appetite to have at least one uh city council meeting in the evening versus both of them in the daytime well, I, i'm just gonna from my experience we i was very supportive of that when we did it several years ago and we actually had less people at the night meetings at, at a cost to the city because of the staff and that that had to be here and one of the things, and we went back to doing it during the day, but, and I articulated, and when I got into this position, that if we ever have a situation where it is a, something that would bring the public more than during the morning meetings, we would schedule a special meeting at night. Um, you know, and I do believe that, you know, like I said, we had less people than we have in the morning meetings than at night, unless that one issue. So we, Mr. Poston, or Mayor Poston at that time said, if it needs to come back, we'll have a night meeting if there's an event that would create that. So, you know, I mean, I just, I don't want to spend a lot of money to be here with less people if that's the case. And, but we tried it for two, three years, I think. None of, none of you no, were here at that uh, point. Oh, no, no, yeah, no Mrs. sir. Mrs. Barney was here uh, before. Before, and it was done that way. And it was back to, when I got here in 2013, it was back to morning meetings. And we changed it shortly thereafter to be one in the morning, one at night, and we had less people. So that's just the history of what, since I've been here. So. Mr. Mayor, I, I remember exactly when we went to doing that. And one of the reasons that we did that is we had many issues coming in front of the city that dealt with uh, planning issues, development issues. And what we originally started doing was uh, when you would have a, a planning issue that would require you know first reading and then the, the second reading and hearing we would do the first reading at the day meeting and then have the second reading and hearing at the night meeting to be able to encourage residents around those areas to be able to attend uh, initially it did work pretty well but the minute that we stopped having major development issues in the city, the uh, attendance f kind of eked out. Yeah, that's, that's a good point that you made it because, you know, now that we're proposing to sell City Hall, I think that that would be a good time to start those evening meetings again because it, it was, should and like public dope. We've got a lot of uh, controversial issues coming at us that I think it would be in the best interest to have uh, public awareness as much as possible. So, is is anybody disagree with me or? I Mrs. Mean, Coachman, thank you. Um, history, and I I can I can understand that it kind of poses or points towards maybe evening wouldn't be that much different. But from where I sit, the uh, the public is a little more engaged. I think. Uh, now than maybe they were some years back. And we are having some really big uh, issues and, and that are going to s impact right. the taxpayers quite a bit. So <coughs> at least maybe while we're 
tackling some of these really uh, involved things such as selling. I would like to make a motion we, that we can, have. Can I finish? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you was done. So I'm thinking that that would be a good idea to possibly have second hearings in the evening and highly publicized, <coughs> maybe a little extra public publicizing or advertising than we normally do. I mean, even mail outs. I mean, I noticed from an event last night, just last night, we got to do more than just newspaper and, and website. Well, Mrs. Coachman, I don't disagree with you, but I think at this point, our schedule is set for the year. But if we want to, we have that, I think it, it's great that we can say, hey, let's change this when we see something coming, something. when something's coming. So I think that's a good, good idea to, to adjust it when we see an important event, which we've already said we would do. And we even talked about this last year when we set the schedule. If there is an event that we think it would be better to have people at that aren't able to come in the morning, but just to change it automatically now isn't the right time because that cost us money. And I think at the point when we would get to the point where we say, hey, we know this is coming, and a second reading, we think we want to hear from the public, and then we can evaluate each meeting at a special time in that. And I think that's, that's very much within our purview to do, Mr. Rudisell, to, to do a special meeting at night if we sure. have something on the, the agenda that comes up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just have to keep in mind when you're talking about development projects, you know, they have notice requirements that are in the code. So we'd have to, I mean, we'd have to kind of anticipate which ones might be controversial right. or might have a, a lot of public comments. So there may be some, maybe some challenges there, but. We have, um, that, we have that ability with the right timing. Yes. Right. Mrs. Barnaby. Um, Mr. Reader, so would it be possible when we have these projects that we could open the public hearing, get the people that are here in the morning to participate, and continue just that part of the meeting until after 5 o'clock that night? Yes, that, it would be that would the be same an option. Day. So we could still operate our business meeting, which these are, and then do more of a public type event later but mr Just hold on hold on mr sanders not recognized yet mrs coker did you have anything okay mr sanders thank you mr is so if we did that something that mrs marmy just proposed we would have to vote on that to continue that to the evening meeting would we not yes and so then we'd have the same conversation we're having right now that we wouldn't get that probably done i'm, I'm a, i don't want to make a motion that we uh, have one meeting a month uh, in the evening and the details can be worked out. Dies because of a lack of a second. Okay. Mr. Sanders, anything else? Council report? Yes. Uh, I'm very uh, disappointed that we've kicked the football down to January for a comprehensive plan that's now 13 years old. Um, so uh, that's very concerning to me that we're not openly discussing that right now with the public. But um, I would like to have on this motion that on this uh, administrative um, resolution, uh, what's the number? I don't see the number. 22, uh, resolution 22-22, I would ask that the city clerk uh, capture a video of that discussion from the time of tabling and before to get all the information out that I just discussed. I, I always believe in transparency and what you say is what you mean. And so I would like to have that and, and provide it to all the council and mayor and Mr. Rizzo and make it available to the public if they so choose to listen to that portion of tabling that resolution 22-22. It, it's it, it, probably a small clip, very, very, uh, you can do it with a thumb drive to all the council and a, and a mayor uh, and the city administrator, obviously, and, uh, uh, and make it, uh, in fact, you can probably put it out on the, uh, 
uh, website if you want, but that's up to you. I mean, I don't care how it's done. I just want to make sure that the full discussion is, is uh, available for uh, review. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Sanders, would it be all right if I sent you the YouTube link and the time? No. no. Okay. The YouTube link, you have to look at, uh, for example, this morning, uh, two hours of meeting. Uh, you. <coughs> no, wait a minute. Yeah, come on. You're doing it. I apologize. <laughs> I, <enjoyed. laughs> I can't concentrate when you're in my ear. Um, yeah, sometimes that happens. You know, you get so impassionate about the, getting your message out that you say those things. Right, Mr. Perry? And so uh, I'm just asking is that, that we all view, view it. I mean, what's, you can clip that in seconds. You've done it for me numerous times. And, and just let everybody look no at problem. it. I mean, come no on. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. All right, Mrs. Coachman. Thank you. Um, I'll just get to the meat of, I'll ignore all this other stuff I wrote down. <laughs> but uh, just this last evening, I, I feel like I'm still on a high um, from a very successful evening event. Um, the Central CRA Advisory Board had uh, suggested that we have a town hall, which is something that, you know, that's in the plans in the future anyway. Um, for all kinds of different things to get the public's support and be transparent. Um, but it was definitely a successful event. It was uh, calling out the community to hear an update on the Mini Rogers project and also to provide us their thoughts and input. And um, council was in the house, everyone was there, uh, and our directors, uh, Mr. McClellan, uh, Ms. Singer, and Ms. Katarina Siren, and, and CCRA staff. Um, so it was well attended by uh, the city showing support to the community that, yeah, we wanna hear what you have to say, and we want you to know that we're working for you. And uh, it, it was an opportunity for the community to hear from the gentleman, and I, this is CCR, <coughs> CRA stuff, but from the gentleman that has bought a, <laughs> for lack of a better term, deplorable uh, former market, and uh, has, is aspiring to, to make it a whole lot better. It's going to be uh, more top notch. Um, and it gave the opportunity for the community to hear of that and then less stress <laughs> on trying to bring uh, a market, a food market, fresh fruits and vegetables and meat uh, to that area because uh, 13th Ave or Mini Rogers site is a very difficult site to bring in certain types of uh, uh, retail. Um, but they were excited and I was super excited. I, I went home, it was probably the best evening I've had in a long time. Um, you know, I even got some of my school district work done. I was in such a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and BPD, oh my gosh, how can I forget? You know, they were, they were supportive. This happened to be at uh, the church that I attend. It was our Family Life Center. And there was some concern uh, from the other officers of the church. Well, we have a daycare there. And we, you know, we're very protective of who is in and out of that building um, during the hours, operating hours of the daycare. And uh, you know, I went back and forth with them. Oh, don't worry, we'll be fine. And then when I said, well, some BPD officers will be there. Then I was like, okay. <laughs> so it was really a great event. Um, kudos to all that. Uh, work for the citizens, we were there in good number. And I know, Rob, I know you weren't able to, but I know you want it to be there, and I'm sure you'll be in future ones. I will be, I promise. Yes, yes sir. Ms. Coachman, are you? Oh, Mr. yeah, I'll stop there. Yes, I, think uh, I, I forgot to mention that. That was an excellent meeting, and that's why I'm an advocate for, yes, I was a lot of people there and a lot of comments, and I tell you what, I think we resolved a lot of issues in that area, and they came away very excited that, that we are doing that public. That's the importance to me is to, to get the public's input of what they want in their city, and they were very happy. So I'll, I'll say that multiple times up here and just keep pounding it. I want the public involved because it's not my city, it's not your city, it's our city. Can I for my report? Okay. 
Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to um, ag agree wholeheartedly with Councilwoman Coachman and thank you for all that had something to put it together. I think that all of the people that showed up had great discussions. No one came in with any outside agendas. I thought it was well, I, 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 it didn't have that appearance to me. It seemed like very healthy discussion and everyone was putting their listening ears on as well as coming up with ideas. I, I came away with the same thing. And I would like to say, again, as I have, I would like to see that happen in the 14th Street CRA, and, and I know this isn't the right place, but in the Bradenton CRA. I think that, you know, working with the citizens like that is key to our success and so thank you for for, for all that put it together um it was it was wonderful and uh i also wanted to report back to you we have a meeting this friday with the sarasota bay estuary uh policy board um there's some good news coming out about the state of our waters um it is they are trying to work on a project um, with uh, a, a pilot project to see if they can transplant or grow new seagrasses. That's our big problem right now, is that we lost so much of the, of the seagrasses with the red tide. Um, they haven't seen from the, um, you know, the Piney Point what they had expected. Now there's just some recent blue algae that's been surfacing and they don't know if that has something to do with the piney point but um that's just what i got in my report this week they are about to give out about 10 uh grants to different organizations and of course our district is sarasota and manatee but there are a few manatee projects specifically there's one for keep manatee beautiful they're doing a mural at <coughs> on the causeway um so uh just um wanted to keep you guys up to date um not, as far as the grants those will be voted on on friday but that was a recommended one that they were going to go for and uh if anybody has any questions that they want me to to investigate or anything our meetings friday just let me know you know what jane might be good or miss coker i'm sorry um is maybe ask mr uh, to, Mo to Moscow mm -hmm. to come You'd back. like him I, to come I, back I, again? Yeah, see if he has yeah. not doesn't have to be next meeting or whatever, maybe one of our meetings in uh, July or something or June. Okay. But this I just summer. I love his okay. his realness and the way he addresses things. And mm -hmm. I sat on that board for a number of years and the, the other gentleman was great, but Dave has a different well, and he has such a science background as and, and as well as, and that's one of the things that was discussed, um, is that we're able to do things a lot more efficiently on that board because of the scientific background he and some of the other people have. So rather than having to go and hire a, a science person he's able to he's going out and doing water sampling himself and he does it for the love and you know he lives up here in palmetto so he he has a heart for us and um so anyhow i'm happy to i'll, I'll be i'll ask him if he can come appreciate it miss barnaby thank you mr mayor mr mcclellan if i could ask you to um join us at the podium if you could please give us an update uh we've we've seen the uh, first part of the Riverview Boulevard project done now and I've gotten wonderful reviews from the neighbors they're very happy about it they're very happy that the double yellow line is back where it's supposed to be so if you can tell us what what's next uh, as with the additional part of the project that's going to be down from 26th to 20th please um, the, dr the drainage project is one that is being designed internally by our engineering staff um, they're in the final stages of the design and we're hoping to be able to um, at the earliest probably get something started construction wise the first of August associated with that um, our our agenda item related to the water keepers has occupied a lot of our engineering staff's time so Understood. that's kind of slowed a few things Understood. down and if you could also do an update on Lewis Park, I know we've had some delays getting equipment. 
Yeah, the, the biggest association with Lewis Park was we didn't want to tear the park up until we knew the equipment was going to be here so that we could kind of keep the park's destruction to a, to a the least amount of time. Um, the current schedule is for that equipment to be available for delivery in July. So we had a meeting scheduled for 11 o'clock today for coordination. Um, I've got notification that it had been canceled. I'm not sure who couldn't make it to the meeting. Uh, so we're trying to schedule that coordination meeting for next week uh, where we'll have the Rotary, our contractor who's doing the, the civil work associated with everything, as well as our teams there so that we can kind of coordinate, make sure everything is timed out right. Perfect, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, also, we've, we've had some information come in today between uh, with information with the Army Corps of Engineers, with FDOT, some of the larger uh, government agencies that we have to interact with. But I just want everyone to understand they don't have to talk to us if they don't want to. <laughs> it's not something that we automatically get contacted about. And while I think that's horribly wrong, um, they operate in a whole different paradigm than I think many of us would like. So I just wanted to share that. I also wanted to thank um, Mrs. Coachman and the CCRA Advisory Board, our, our CCRA, or our CRA director and staff, um, the, the host of Ward Temple uh, AME. I thought the, the meeting was wonderful. <laughs> And I, I appreciated everyone stepping up and being able to, for us to be able to meet in such a, such a caring atmosphere. So please, please tell your church, thank you so much. I was going to talk about this previously, but this is exciting stuff, folks. The two million uh, donation from Mr. and Mrs. Herring with Art Center Manatee the iconic building that's going to be placed there i think that this is is going to make uh our our front what i call our front door when you come over the green bridge and you come into bradenton i think it's going to make our front door very attractive and very pretty and i'm very excited about that um i know that the art center is still securing donations i don't mind sharing i made mine years ago when i was on that board and uh, I would encourage all of the citizens that want to see the Art Center become the Art Center that our community truly deserves to, to step up and help them out. With this getting close to the end of the year, and we're going to be having graduations come shortly, I wanted to uh, share a couple of things. One, I wanted to say best wishes to Travis Persinger, who has been the girls basketball coach at Manatee High. He is leaving the school and he is taking a position with Major League Baseball. Mm. And it's a very exciting opportunity for him. And so I, I want to wish him the very best. Uh, I also want to share with you about two of the young ladies that I've gotten to know through that program. One of them, Kylie O'Dell, you have seen here because she was the Manatee High uh, representative to Girl State. She was the recipient of the Bob Bartz Citizenship Award at the Golden Herald Awards recently. She has a 3.9 weighted GPA. She's president of the local key club at Manatee High, uh, served uh, as one of the captains on the girls basketball team, and she will be attending Southeastern University, and we're very proud of her. Many of you also remember meeting Ty Barclay, who rode with me in the DeSoto Parade last year. She uh, is participating. She will be going to the state tournament. She placed number one in regionals and shot put, number three in discus, and has been uh, appointed or, or received the United States Marine Corps Distinguished Athlete Award. She's in the top 4% of her class, and she will be attending uh, Florida International University on an athletic scholarship, and we're very proud of her. So to those young ladies and to all of the grads, both high school and colleges that are, that are coming out into the world, we say congratulations. I hope those that have grown up here will come back to us after they finish their education. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Barbie. Mr. Sanders? Uh, yes, I, thank you, Ms. Barnaby. You used to be on that arts board when I think I first met you back 15 years ago or whatever. I don't think you're on it now, but you've always supported that. And so I'm 
I, I like the design and I like what we're doing there. And it is an interest, it's gonna be a very good for us in that $2 million uh, donation by Sons was a shot in the arm. That was absolutely, everybody should thank that gentleman for doing that because he is a true corporate citizen and he's done other things and will do other things in this city i believe so i'm i'm proud to have him as part of our our corporate uh one of our corporate employers that we support uh mr uh mcclellan uh, wait, it's not on the agenda but i'd like to have an update on the river walk the two sections and primarily i'd like you to start with the section that i don't see anything being done what, right beside the apartments between there and like 9th Street, 10th Street Court and 9th, where there's fencing up and that's basically it. Well, why aren't we, I thought we was going to simultaneously do that with the other section. Um, I believe it's related to the coordination work that they're doing. The, the work associated with the boardwalk, which is about 80% complete right at this point, has been accessed from 14th Street. Um, they're in the process now of, of remobilizing it and moving over to accessing off of 10th Street Court or off of Riverside from that side um, for the finishing works associated with that. Um, the fencing is up, the, the trees in that area, they, they are, they're proposing that they were going to be knocked down rather than cut down. So I'm assuming that that's related to um, equipment delivery um, I, I'll have to check to verify that for you as to when they expect to m make earnest efforts in, the, in that area. Um, but, but I thought that they were, <coughs> that NDC was allowed to go ahead because- They, they, they are allowed to go ahead. You did the, the electric locates and so forth, so mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand why there's not more, act, well, any activity in that area. I, I will find out for you. I appreciate it. And then the other section, uh, in front of Mr. Zoller's house. We're taking, taking out the seawall and we're now extended it on down to the caddies. And when do you, I, I don't know if that's been marked again. When are you proposing, when do you think that that uh, street will do its? Uh, the, the thing that they're waiting on, and they didn't want to tear the road up until they get right. the structures. There's, there's new drainage structures that, go, that are going in. So they've been focusing their energy on the wall work um, and, and we'll continue on that um, until the structures arrive. Once the structures arrive, then they'll start the process of the work associated with shifting the roadway. Shifting. But they didn't want to tear that up until they were ready okay. to get okay. all the When materials. do you think that, do you have a clue when that would be? Um, I know the submittals have all been approved for those items, so it's a, it's a, it's a logistics in terms of the delivery of the structures. Um, I would suspect it's probably a, 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 at least a couple of weeks before they'll arrive on site. A couple of weeks. Okay. And then would that road be closed to only a local traffic of people that live on that street? Or? The, the MOT that's set up is intended to have it be a one-way roadway. One-way roadway. Um, and I think it's intended to be... Um, Eastbound, I'd, I'd have to refer back just to during the, construction. Just during construction. Well, after completion, is go back to two way. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, uh, one other thing, we're doing some concrete work that that you've done a good job at, and, and I so, but they're they're bringing some of that concrete sidewalks all the way down to that, aren't they? Just wasting their time coming all the way down to the street because it's going to be tore up again. Uh, no, because the 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 only thing that's changing is the curb line. The sidewalk stays in place at that location. Sidewalk's not moving on the south side of the road. The curb line of the road will move back to, the, to that location. Move back to the sidewalk? Yes. I thought it was, for, is that 10 feet? Is that, I thought it was like 10 feet. No, what's, what's being, so the curb line is being moved from where it is to be adjacent to the sidewalk on the south side. On the north side, there'll be a 10 foot walkway and what the end result is the road will be narrower than it is now. Right. There'll be sh um, thinner travel lanes. Right. So that's, that's good because that restricts, you know, speeding It, it, it will be, it will be a, an inhibitance to, to traffic, be yes. be happy about that, that hopefully will guide it to uh, walkability, you know, bicycle, Correct. whatever, mobility uh, versus uh, traffic. So I think that makes the, the constituents there very happy that it's, you know, you can get in there, but it's basically look, look. We're, we're designing this as a river walk for the public. Correct. All right. That's all I have. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. McClellan. All right, um, I just have a couple things. First off, I want to, I'd say congratulate the CCRA and, and that board and our staff at Katarina and, and obviously the citizen board that was there. I think you heard a lot of good things last night. And I think that we heard a lot from the citizens and that was one of the things in June of 2012 I was involved with as just a, a candidate for city council at that time and some of the uh, information that was out there that people wanted. So they tried to get that and we've realized over the years that you know you can't always make a square peg fit in a uh, round hole. So engaging the community is something that I've always done with any boards I've been involved in when I was in the leadership roles and I think that's something that you're going to see more of in the city part of it as well as we know the CRA. So it's a great thing to to have that involvement and and we had some of the standard players and then we have and I, I was glad somebody brought it up and then when I closed out the meeting last night bringing up Mrs. Bacon and and you know Eloise called me a lot because I was actually on the housing authority um, board and, and uh, or as the liaison at that point and then also with Braden Village a lot of things that were going on at the time so her and I would meet we would meet on that 13th Avenue property and she would tell me what I needed to do and I would just say yes ma'am and try to figure it out for her. so you know we got to remember remember those that have come before us that are not here anymore and what they think about and what they do and and I think that we saw with the new energy in the community and what a Miller's type market can do and reevaluate what we do. And I think there's an opportunity there. Does that slow it up a little bit? Maybe, but we got to get it right. And, and again, if you've been around me any in this seat and others, I'm a, I want to get stuff done quick. So I think we've got a great council here. I think the CRA has a great board and staff to do everything. So um, that was a great event. Um, Mrs. Barnaby talking about the Art Center. And, um, you know, obviously all, we all want to thank all the donors in that, especially the one coming in now and kind of putting us closer to that, that pinnacle. But when you look, that design won an award from the architectural drawings of it already. So, you know, before it was ever even built, it's already an award-winning building design. So we're lucky that that's there. Now it's coming to fruition that we're going to be able to have hopefully an award-winning building when it's done and I think that will be the the architectural so that's very exciting for the the one of the entrances to our city and what we do to continue on on Avenue of the Arts so we're continuing that um, the next thing is we're getting old our birthday's coming up for the city of Bradenton May 19th 1903 and on the 21st realize Bradenton that the, the market is going to have an event that uh, going to bring up some of the fun history performance and one or two of us up here might have a little part in that uh, reading some things I don't know how uh, we're going to see and we're going to bring back some of the old mayors some of the ones that might not even still be alive might make a uh, presentation of uh, looks and things I don't know it's but it's it's, it's going to be a quirky little thing that goes out there and, and bring up some of that but but just the snapshots of Bradenton's past and and hopefully you know we'll see what the future is going to bring and excitement for that um, as we've, we've said all along, and I've said uh, quite a bit, we're going to have fun. We're going to continue to have fun in this city. And uh, we'll have our ups and downs at times, but we're going to continue to grow and be positive and uh, just get through this uh, little time in the summer. You know, I, I congratulate all the graduates. I think it's the first time in many years I haven't got a card in the mail from a graduate saying, I'm graduating. Well, you know why they give you the cards because <laughs> they want a little donation, which is well worth it. Well, to give it to we're them. all getting old, older. I don't have anybody. I didn't <laughs> get really one announcing yet this that year. you need to get some no, of those. No friends, <laughs> people I've coached, or, or nieces or nephews, or people at that point. But we got a few coming in the near future with some sixth graders and on. So, um, but anyway, no, it's just we're going to have fun. We're going to continue to work for the good of the city, and all of us will will continue to put in the effort that I believe that that we know is deserved to our citizens. Um, I believe that's all I have. Um, but just to say, please stay safe. Summertime for our young people are more on the streets, so drive safely, as well as uh, keep mentoring the ones that are just learning to drive to, <laughs> to do the right things. 
Uh, but we appreciate everything everyone does. Um, department heads, anybody have anything specific? Mrs. Singer? Um, want to introduce our new senior planner, Jamie Schindewolf, uh, who comes to us from Manatee County. Uh, she has a master's in planning from Florida State, but her bachelor's is from University of Florida. So she's got all the bases <laughs> covered. <all> <laughs> Um, but she formerly uh, did a uh, brief internship with the city um, before going to work for Manatee County. So uh, she comes with a number of years of experience, including experience in public presentations. So you'll be seeing her here uh, as part of our um, uh, planning petitions um, when she comes forward. Bring her up to say hello. Say hello. Her. Welcome. <laughs> I was looking for her. Welcome aboard, thank you for coming. Hello, good morning, yes. Um, I mean, like Robin said, that's my, my higher ed background, but I am, uh, I was not born in Bradenton, but I was raised in Bradenton, uh, Seabreeze Elementary, Bradenton Academy, and then Southeast High Grad. So really excited to finally be working for the city and being part of it at such an exciting time. So let's get welcome, to work. Welcome. <laughs> thank, thank you all. Appreciate it. Ms. Singer. Yeah, Mr. Perry. I'm Mr. Sanders. I know. Oh, Mr. Sanders, your turn. Ms. Singer. Uh, I, I brought up before about uh, permitting fees. Are you going to have that on the agenda next time to, for us to discuss as a council on how we increase the fees and, and what the logic was behind uh, the fee structure? Um, certainly, I think we, we did identify where it was approved through, I believe, resolution uh, by city council, yeah. Uh, now the reasoning for that, of course, it predates me, and, and, but we may have some information in the minutes uh, that'll give us a, a background on how the fees and why the fees were. Did, Gen did, generally speaking, your fees have to cover our costs. Absolutely. absolutely. So, Absolutely, yeah. and and you know my biggest concern was the dock fee. It went from three hundred dollars to eighteen hundred dollars, and I thought, uh, and I and I've I've had that explanation to me, so I, I'm not asking for details. But can you provide that um, um, resolution to me if you have it handy? It sounds like you researched it. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember that, but um, and uh, the um, uh, fee structure before and after. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, Mrs. Singer. Um, there was there was nothing changed without council approval. Correct. Correct. Okay, that's what I just want to make sure. Thank you. All right. Any other department heads? Mayor, just one matter that yes. uh, Councilor Co uh, Coachman may want to present. Thank you. Thank you. In my trying to be expedient, I forgot to mention something. Uh, just giving you some dates. Um, June second, we will be have. It's a Thursday. We'll be having. Um, free hot dogs and drinks for participants. We're asking the community to come out and help design their, uh, the community parks. We have two parks that we've been looking at and it's uh, the MLK Park, which will meet uh, June 2nd at 6 p.m. there. And then Tuesday, June 7th at Love Park at 6 p.m. But these flyers will be going around. I just didn't want to omit that. All right, thank you. Thank we'll you. continue Sorry. to try to publicize that. It's a pretty cool event where you get the, the public putting input into park development. But yeah, thanks so much for watching up. More engagement. So. All right, anything else? No, sir. Anyone else? Good morning. I'm here in Fire Chief Gear's absence. He's on vacation. He'll return to work on May 16th. Uh, the only thing I have to report is the move into Station 3. New Station 3 is imminent. Should be there this week, um, living and operating out of it. And we do have a grand opening for current and past elected officials, city administrators. That's going to be on May 23rd. Hope you can see, be there. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Mayor, uh, Chief Kennedy and, and, and the group uh, from FIRE have been working over Station 3 and uh, trying to debug that final punch list and I think you'll be very impressed with the uh, facility and the program that they operate out of there. <coughs> All right. Thank you. We appreciate it. Anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, we'll be adjourned. Thank you.